Hey guys, how you doing? This is John and welcome to my Nostalgia Holic show. This is part two. This is top my top 10 1980s movies. Uh, you know, I recommend you guys check out part one, which would be numbers 20 through 11. I'll put a link to that up here so you can check that out. Um, but this is number 10, so these are getting to some really good ones. Uh, please feel free to do video responses, um, post comments below as well. Let me know what you guys think about my list and share your own by all means, okay? On to number 10. Okay, number 10 on my list is hugely popular today. It came out in 1985, written by Steven Spielberg, a filmed in the Oregon Shore and the Oregon, Oregon Coast. Hey, you guys. I'm sure if you guys recognize those words, you probably know what I'm talking about. It's called The Goonies, uh, starring Corey Feldman in the movie, as well as uh, Sean Austin, who went on later on to uh, star in Rudy, the movie Rudy, as well as the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Did a great job uh, in that movie as well, those movies as well. But uh, classic movie, um, basically these kids go on an adventure and they find like a treasure map and they want to uh, go and find One-Eyed Willies and his treasure and, and they, they bump into a whole bunch of people in the way, some bandits, and it's super funny. Um, my favorite character, I believe, is uh, his name's like Gadget or something like that. He's in the, the Asian kid in the movie, the little Asian kid, and he has all these little gadgets and stuff. And it's pretty funny, really, really funny movie. I really recommend you guys check out The Goonies. That's number 10 on my list. Number nine on my list is a movie also by John Hughes. I mentioned one of his movies, Weird Science, on my part one video. Uh, this is uh, number nine. This is The Breakfast Club. Emilio Estevez. Um, love the soundtrack in this movie. Uh, basically, they're in school, and a bunch of just different characters get together in detention, and they talk to each other, and it's like they kind of bond in a kind of a really unique way. Uh, and it's done really, really well. Um, definitely a classic 1980s movie, uh, for sure. I had to put it on my top ten. Number eight on my list is a movie that came out in 1985, features uh, Michael J. Fox, Back to the Future. Um, what a great story plot. Uh, basically, Michael J. Fox, it's filmed 1985, so he has to go back in time to when his parents, uh, you know, basically have his parents, save his parents' relationship more or less. But uh, it's really interesting how um, the, everything kind of happens and every, all the sequences happen when they go back in time and everything kind of changes and he can't necessarily be seen, although he is seen. And, um, and then when Back to the Future 2 came out later on, they have to go back to the same part of the Back to the Future 1. It's really confusing, but uh, really a great story. I believe Spielberg was uh, part of the producer of, of, of Back to the Future as well. I went on to make three movies. Uh, definitely a great trilogy, but uh, that is number eight on my list, Back to the Future. Number seven on my list is a classic movie. It came out in 1981, starring Harrison Ford. is a movie uh, that started another franchise of movies, a string of movies. Uh, series was uh, put on to by good friends, uh, George Lucas and Steven Spielberg. It's Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark. I uh, love the movie. I love the time frame, the 30s and 40s time period. And basically he goes out, Indiana Jones goes out to find uh, the, the Lost Ark. Uh, and uh, goes in, as he goes on the adventure, he, you know a lot of cool things happen. So, uh, definitely recommend uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. That is number seven on my list. Number six on my list is kind of an interesting pick. I'm sure maybe some of you guys may have never heard of this movie before, but to me, it's just it's got a cool classic feel to it. Didn't do very well in the theaters. In fact, it did, it flopped. Um, I believe the budget of it was like 11 million. Only made like three million in the theaters. Didn't do very well at all. But it's it's. Um, called Rad, or sometimes called it Rad Racing, and basically it's a BMX movie, um, and Crew Jones is like the main character in the movie, but what I like about it, it's got a really cool 80s feel to it, um, and it's got like a really great soundtrack as well. In fact, the soundtrack's probably one of the better 80s soundtracks that I've ever heard. Um, if you guys haven't seen Rad Racing, I really encourage you guys to check it out. It's not really on DVD or anything like that, unfortunately. You can get bootleg DVDs, but it was on VHS, um, and I'm sure you can go and search, hunt down a, a copy of it for sure, but um, definitely a cult classic, and I would love it to come out on Blu-ray Blu someday, but I'm not sure if that will ever happen, because it never came out on DVD. But it's number uh, six on my list. It's called Rad. Number five on my list is the original Batman. came out in 1989, uh, directed by Tim Burton, starring Michael Keaton. Uh, to me, uh, this is probably one of my favorite Batmans ever made. Uh, I love the feel, the dark feel. Tim Burton did a great job with the dark feel. I think Jack Nicholson did a fantastic job playing Joker. Um, and it just got a really great plot. Um, it really flows nicely. It's not over the top. I think later on when they did Batman and Robin and some of the other ones, it, it had a really weird fantasy feel to it where uh, Tim Burton's Batmans, both the first and Batman Returns, uh, have a more kind of a dark tone to it, but um, a really classic movie. 
Uh, if you like The Dark Knight, you've seen the re recent Batmans, do yourself a favor. If you haven't seen the original Batman by Tim, by Tim Burton and with Michael Keaton, definitely check it out. It came out in 1989. It just holds up really well today even. Number four on my list is a movie that came out in 1988. It's Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Uh, and it's a great kind of murder mystery movie to, you know, and you try to figure out who killed, who framed Roger Rabbit, basically. Um, but it's, it's cool in the sense that it's live action and cartoon. It's only instance where actually Disney and Warner Brothers both work together and had cartoon characters in it. So you'll see Mickey Mouse and you'll see Bugs Bunny in the same movie. Uh, it's really done really well. Um, absolutely love it. Jessica Rabbit's in it as well. And there's some really cool characters. I remember Baby. Uh, and I remember the, the, the short cartoons before the movie featuring uh, Baby, whatever. It's pretty funny. So definitely check out Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Came out in 1988. Uh, definitely a must see. Number three on my list is a movie by George Lucas. And no comes no surprise. I'm a huge Star Wars fan. So I have to put Return of the Jedi as number three. Um, absolutely love this movie. Um, and it's the kind of wraps up the whole Star Wars story really well at the end. Um, special effects still hold on today. Um, you know, I love the, the different characters George Lucas used. Uh, definitely a classic in my personal opinion and a really nice finish to the original Star Wars trilogy. So that is number three on my list. Number two on my list is a movie by Steven Spielberg. came out in 1982. It's E.T., The Extraterrestrial, uh, starring a young Drew Barrymore. Um, but basically, the, the basic plot and premise is uh, Elliot, uh, basically, E.T. comes, crash lands, uh, young kid Elliot uh, discovers E.T. He's from out of outer space and E.T. needs to come up to home. Uh, so there's an adventure of Elliot trying to work with E.T. Uh, there's definitely some parts of the movie that are tear jerkers, I won't lie to you. Uh, but uh, still a great movie. Uh, definitely recommend E.T. Number one on my list is a movie that came out in 1980 by George Lucas. I have to put this number one, of course. It's Empire Strikes Back. My favorite movie of the original trilogy. It is uh, one of those rare movies that uh, actually, the bad guys kind of win in it, which I like. It's got a very dark tone to it. Uh, it's where Luke discovers that uh, Darth Vader is his father. Uh, and uh, some classic moments in Star Wars. It introduces Yoda to the whole Star Wars universe. And, and I think Frank Oz did a fantastic job uh, using Yoda as a puppet, uh, making him look real. Uh, none of the CG stuff. So at number one on my list is Empire Strikes Back.